This is Christopher Cernike, hosting episode one of season one of the Current Topics in Science podcast. This podcast will address breaking scientific news in light of the origins debate and host interviews with scientists. This podcast is available on the following platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcast, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Video recordings of the podcast will be uploaded to YouTube. Enjoy the podcast. Even though it is being called a dinosaur, this plant went extinct back in 2011. According to Bloomberg, the Crescent Dune solar plant cost over $1 billion and was already obsolete prior to its completion. According to Yahoo News, even though the Crescent Dune solar plant promised to deliver much when it was approved back in 2011, it closed last year in 2019 because it failed to meet those expectations. The plant is now closed, abandoned, and is, and I quote, subject of huge ongoing lawsuits, end quote. A little research into the history of the Crescent Dunes solar plant reveals that the plant was designed and constructed by ACS Cobra, a construction and infrastructure development industry. The United States government gave a handful of companies, and I quote, over $700 million in government loan guarantees, end quote. The basic concept of Crescent Dunes was that the 300 acres of solar collectors would power the molten salt tower created by Solar Reserve Incorporated in the middle of the grid. The website for Solar Reserve is currently offline and according to Carolina Delbert, quote, more than one of its projects has ended in the possibility of bankruptcy, end quote. So what was it exactly that caused the Crescent Dunes solar plant to be what its critics are calling an expensive flop? The falling price of solar technology was what led to the demise of the Crescent Dunes plant. In fact, according to Bloomberg, the cost of the Crescent Dunes solar plant was, quote, $135 per megawatt hour compared with less than $30 per megawatt hour today at a new Nevada solar farm. Additionally, the Trump administration has approved of another solar plant that would make, quote, 690 megawatts over 7,000 acres, end quote. Even though this new plant will also cost $1 billion, it will produce 690 megawatts compared to Crescent Dunes 110 megawatts. Crescent Dunes was also a great expense. In fact, according to Yahoo News, $737 million in taxpayer money and an additional $140 million from private investors went into funding Crescent Dunes. Even though solar plants may come and go, like Crescent Dunes, our sun which is not funded by taxpayer dollars, will continue to produce energy. In fact, according to Dr. Sarfati, if fusion were totally responsible for the sun's huge power output of 3.86 times 10 to the 26 power watts, 4 million tons of matter would be converted every second into energy." End quote. Even though the star of the Earth orbits, or the sun, is often called average, run-of-the-mill, or even humdrum by Carl Sagan, there is evidence that indicates that the sun is special. In fact, Marcus Chow of New Scientist has called our sun exceptional and said, don't believe everything you read in books. Our sun is no ordinary star. Our sun is uniquely fine-tuned for life to exist on Earth. There are many types of stars, and had the sun been a red supergiant, all of the inner planets would have been engulfed. Had our sun been a blue-white supergiant star like Rigel, it would have been 25,000 times as bright. Along with that intense brightness would also come an abundance of high-frequency radiation. Additionally, had our solar system had a white dwarf star, like the companion to Sirius in the binary star system, 
it would not have been able to support life even if the planets were closer, which would result in the gravitational tides being too dangerous anyway. Furthermore, not only is our sun the right kind of star needed to support life on Earth, our sun is also in the right kind of environment. Many stars exist in what is called multiple star systems. In fact, according to astronomer John Fix, quote, compared with binary and multiple stars, single stars like the sun are a distinct minority. Of every 100 star systems, it is estimated that only 30 contain single stars, 47 are binaries, and the remaining 23 are multiples, most of which are triples. The 100 star systems contain about 200 stars, so if only 30 of them are single stars, then 85% of them are in a binary or in multiple systems. The proportion of stars that are in binary or multiple systems may even be higher than 85%, Moreover, because faint distant companions of what appear to be single stars or close binaries may have been overlooked or gone undetected." End quote. Even though this evidence suggests that our sun was finely tuned or designed to support life on Earth, there is the idea that the sun was formed from nebulous material in our solar system billions of years ago. According to Medium, quote, Although the nebular theory is widely accepted, there are still problems with it that astronomers have not been able to resolve. For example, there is the problem of tilted axes. According to the nebular theory, all planets around a star should be tilted the same way, relative to the ecliptive. But, as we have learned, the inner planets and outer planets have radically different axle tilts." End quote. Another problem with the nebular hypothesis is that some of the objects in our solar system, like the second planet, Venus, and a comet, have what is called a retrograde orbit. The nebular hypothesis predicted that the planets and comets would orbit and rotate in the same direction as the nebula gradually spiraled inwards, which is called prograde rotation. Thus. Retrograde rotation poses a problem for this idea. According to a science and medical writer for the LA Times, quote, that finding is inconsistent with the view that planets are formed by the condensation of dust from a disk surrounding a newly formed star. Some other planets were found to have highly tilted orbits that are also at odds with conventional theory, end quote. As seen from the example of Crescent Dune, sometimes human designs have the tendency to go awry. However, as proven by the field of biomimetics, human beings can create working models when they are inspired by the designs that they observe in nature. We will explore more examples of intelligent design in nature on current topics in science in future episodes. In today's episode, we have learned that the Crescent Dune solar plant is an expensive, obsolete flop, and that our sun has been finely tuned to support life on Earth. Thank you very much for taking the time to learn with us on current topics in science, where scientific evidence and discoveries are examined in light of the origins issue. Please share and subscribe to the Current Topics in Science podcast. It is available on the following platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcast, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Thanks again for listening, and remember, the truth saves.